All right, so today we are starting our unit in Chapter 4. Um, so um, all everything has been, all the notes and solutions to the notes um, are for Chapter 4 are now on your canvas. Uh, all the blank notes, uh, I won't always go over all the notes on the videos and some of the solutions uh, most of the solutions that I've posted go with the notes. There are some extra things on the solutions that we're not going to go over notes, A, because you don't have calculators, and B, that it's not going to be pertinent to the class anymore. So, um, just FYI, you can start with that and start going through those assignments. Uh, chapter 4 assignments have been posted on your Connect Math. Um, make sure you check those due dates. Uh, giving you a lot of time to do homework. Some of y'all do like to wait to the last minute. Make sure we're not wait until the last minute to get those things done. So, chapter 4.1, okay? Um, There's going to be some things in here that we're going to be able to do pretty quick and show you some things that you can do for your homeworks. Um, first things first, uh, 4.1 1 is inverse functions. You did inverse functions uh, back in Algebra 2, okay? Um, so, before we get started in inverse functions, we have to talk about what a 1 to 1 function is. And so here's the definition, and it says a function, f, is a one-to-one -one function uh, for a and b in the domain of f if a is not equal to b and f of a is equal to f of b. Okay, That's a really complicated version of it. Basically, a one-to-one -one function has to be first and foremost a function. And then for every a, you're going to have exactly one b and vice versa. That B can only come from one A. So two things you have to do. One, we have to tell if it's a function first of all. And then you can't have any repeats. So, in other words, for every X, you're going to have to have exactly one Y. Okay, and for every Y, you can only have one specific X. So two, one, four, two, that's okay. So first we got to check, is it a function? So we check all our x's, 2, 4, 7, negative 2. It is a function. That's not a problem. Now, is it a 1 to 1 function? Okay, so we already know for every x there's a, you know, there's a, bleh, there are different x all the way through. Now let's look at y's. 1, 2, 3, 1. Now because of this 1 and this 1, it is a function because 2 goes to 1, negative 2 goes to 1. That's fine. But, to be one to one, one can only go with one specific x, and this one goes to two, and this one goes to negative two. So it is not a one to one function. Okay? If we look at this picture drawing, okay, this mapping. Batman goes to Joker, Green Lantern goes to Sinestro, and Wolverine goes to Sabretooth. Which means every, every hero has its villain, and every villain has its hero. So this is yes. Okay? Now if we would have said Green Lantern also has the Joker, then it wouldn't even be a function. So those are the things we look for. Okay. Now, if you remember, to check to see if it's a function, you have the vertical line test. Okay. Every function has to pass that. Okay. Now, to be a one-to-one, -one, you have the horizontal line test. So if you can pass the vertical line test and the horizontal line test, and the horizontal line is the same as the vertical, you can only touch once, but horizontally, then it's one to one. So vertical passes all the vertical. Does it pass all the horizontals? Yes. So this is one to one. Okay. This one passes vertical, but does it pass horizontal? No. Not one to one. And then this one passes vertical. Does it pass horizontal? Yes. It is one to one. Simple as that. Okay. Now, why do we have to know one to one? Because if I have a function and I find its inverse, if the original function is one to one, then its inverse function is going to be one to one. And if you remember, one to one or inverses are the flips of your x and y's. Okay, so we look here, it says use the definition of one to one function to determine whether or not these are one to one. Well, this, number six, is linear. 
Well, linear is a function. Okay, and is it a vertical? Well, it's not vertical. Okay, is it a horizontal line? No, it's not a horizontal line. So this is one to one because this would be up to up three, and that it passes both horizontal and vertical. Okay, well this is quadratic. Okay, well quadratic. Okay, is parabola passes vertical, but does it pass horizontal? No, it doesn't. Now, how can I tell? Okay, well, one of the ways we can look at it is if you, if you solve this for x, okay, if this is y, and you solve this for x, okay, and we solve, we have y cubed over 3 x squared, and this would be plus or minus y is equal to x. And that's not simplified, but it doesn't really matter if it's simplified or not. Okay, here I have a plus or minus over here. That means for the positive version of this, it equals x, and for the negative version, it equals x, which means I have different y's for different x's, which means it's not going to be one to one. Okay, so that's another way you can tell. All right, so we go to page two, and this is something we did do in algebra two, is telling whether or not two functions are inverses by using compositions. Okay, and the way we taught this was the fact that if you can find f of g of x and it equals x, and also g of f of x equals x, then they are inverses of each other. Okay, and so what you have to do is you have to do two parts to this. Okay, so we're going to take f of x and we're going to find f of g of x. And if you remember, that means we're going to take g of x and put it into the f function. So this would be 3 times x plus 6. And put your g of x function in there. Distribute. And our goal is to equal x. So that would be x minus 6 plus 6, which equals x. Good, that's what we want. Okay. But you also have to do g of f of x. Okay, which means the g function, put the f function inside, distribute x plus 2 minus 2, which is x, yes. So these are, yes, they are inverses. Okay. So let's try number 9. f of g of x tells me to do x plus 1 over 5, plug in the g of x, okay, simplify that, 5x plus 2 over 5, well that does not simplify, this does not equal x, so these are not inverses. Once you get a no, you got a no, and that is something that we dealt with in Algebra 2. Okay, and we're only going to be going linear, so you shouldn't have too many issues with some of that. Even if you go quadratic, I think you can handle quadratic. Okay. Um, now, let's look at how do we find the inverse of a function. Again, this is something we did in Algebra 2. Okay. Finding that you have a couple different steps you have to do with. Okay. So first, we replace the f of x with y. Then we're going to switch all our x and y's with each other. And we will solve for y. And if it's a one-to-one -one function... We're going to, if we're dealing with a one-to-one -one function, then we're going to give it a inverse symbol. This means inverse. Okay? So those are going to be our steps we're going to use. Okay? If you need to jot them down, then jot them down. So here it says, using those steps, and we want to find the inverse of this. Now, this is the picture. Is it a one-to-one? -one? Yes, it is. It is one to one. That's a good thing. Any linear is going to be one to one unless it's horizontal or vertical. Okay. So what we're going to do is we got to switch this with a y, and then we're going to switch our x and y's. X is equal to two plus one half y, and we're going to solve for y. So we're going to subtract the two. And if I go real fast, you can always stop and rewind. Okay. And then we're going to multiply everything by two. So we get 2x minus 4 is equal to y, which means this is an inverse 2x minus 4. 
Now, if we want to graph that, you could graph it if it asked you to graph it. That's one, two, three, four. Okay, up to a one, up to a one. All right, and then we're gonna have this would be my inverse. Okay, notice it is a function. All right, then we have a rational. We're gonna do this one. I don't know how many of these you're gonna get, but at least it gives you an idea of what you have to deal with. Okay, so this is a function. Notice it passes vertical line test, which means its inverse would be. All right, so this one's going to be a little bit more difficult because if you notice, this would be my y, correct? Which means this is going to be my x and this is going to be my y. Okay, and we actually have to solve this for y, which means we're going to have to do a little bit more work because the first thing you have to do is you have to cross multiply. Ugh. Okay, this would be x, y plus x is equal to 3y, and you have to get your y's to the same side. Okay, so we're going to have x is equal to 3y minus xy, and here's where you have to actually factor out the y. Or factor out the x. Oh no, excuse me, the y, I'm right. Factor out the y. Factor out the y. So we'll have y is equal to 3 minus x, or y times 3 minus x, excuse me, it's Monday morning is equal to x, and then y is going to equal x over 3 minus x. Okay, which means the inverse of this is going to be x over 3 minus x. And there's your inverse. Okay, I don't think there is actually one on your notes, but in case, or your homework, but in case there is, um, we're not going to make you do one of those for a test, but, you know, you've seen something new. Okay. Now, this one you may see, though. Okay, if you look at here, here is a quadratic, but only where x is greater than 0. Okay, so I'm only using the ones greater than 0. So we're going to solve this. This is my y, so this is going to be x is equal to y squared plus 3. Okay, so we're going to actually solve this for x, or y, x minus 3 is equal to y squared, and here's where we're going to have an issue. We're going to have the square root plus or minus. Okay, so we're actually going to get y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x minus 3. Okay? However, okay, if we look at this, if we were to graph this, and this is a function rule that you should know, this is the square root function that has a transformation that is right 3, this would be this graph here. It looks like this. So notice, that looks like this, but I have a plus or minus. The minus piece would actually be this piece here, but then it's not a function. It doesn't pass. So what we actually have to do is we actually have to take that negative out, and that's what this does. These points are just the positive version. So our inverse of this is actually just the positive version of that graph. Because if I take the negative version of that graph, which is this part over here, then I don't have a function when I have the inverse. Okay, so um, those are little things that you have to do. Now the last part of these notes, okay, uh, just a couple bits of information. When two functions are inverses of each other, their domain and range switch. So if I have a function, let's say we have a function, and its domain is all real numbers, and its range, well, let's just say its range is 5 to infinity. This is what if, okay? If I find its inverse, then it, we can find its domain and range simply by switching. Its domain would be 5 to infinity, and its range would be negative infinity to infinity. And that will happen for any inverse of a function. Okay, whether it's an, a function or not, or one-to-one, -one, if you find the inverse of a function, its domain and range will flip from its original function. And that's just a little helpful guide and make things a little easier for you. And the last thing is graphing a function, or graphing an inverse from its function. Okay, And if you remember, we did this again in Algebra 2, but remember, inverse points, okay, inverse points, if I have a point A, B, its inverse point is just going to be B, A. And if you do them in the same order, 
you won't have an issue. So if you take this point here, which is at negative 4, negative 2, its inverse point would have to be neg negative 2, negative 4. So if I go negative 2, negative 4, I have that point. If I take this point, which is negative 3, 1, I would have the inverse point of 1, negative 3. So I go to 1, negative 3. And I connect them. And I go in that same order. Okay, so this is 1, this is 2, this is 1, this is 2. So if I find the third point, which is at negative 1, 2, this is the third point, that would be at 2, negative 1, 2, negative 1. Connect those. And then the last one here is at 1, 4. That's the fourth point. So the fourth inverse point would be at 4, 1, 4, 1. And there is my inverse picture. And it's as simple as that. Okay, and the nice thing about some of the things that you're going to be graphing on your homework is that's all you have to do and you'll get your new picture. Okay, so that does wrap up 4.1. Hope it helps. Again, if you have any issues, first and foremost, rewind it, play it again so you know it, and then also you can always come to office hours. Okay, um, office hours also are going to need a password if you come into uh, manually and not using the link. Link's always easiest. You do not need a password for the link. Okay, and make sure we're using proper etiquette. Thank you and have a great day.